Hi there, it's Ian Cunningham from VectorGB and this is the third video in my series on certificate-based authentication in diagnostics. I hope you've been able to watch the, the last two videos, especially the demo that actually shows you how it all works. So this video really is just to kind of wrap everything up, show a couple of other things that are possible um, and, and uh, yeah, a quick summary of, of what we've looked at in the other two videos. But yeah, if you really want to see the details, then of course, look at the other videos. And please don't hesitate to get in touch with us if you'd like to know more about anything you've seen in any of the videos or to understand more about Vector's products in relation to um, authentication and, and security in, in general. So we've talked about the use cases. So we have secure onboard communication in Autosar, which gives us message, message authentication and encryption. This gives us the, the ability to have protection against replay attacks and to make sure we have freshness management in our ECUs for checking that data is, is fresh that's coming into them. We have seen uh, or understood how we can work with public key cryptography uh, this has a concept obviously of administration of keys uh, and certificates we, we've seen with, within the diagnostic section um, how we can work with, with certificate data in the demo section i should say sorry and we are also of course able to support specific systems for for oem uh, needs different manufacturer needs um, we have Secure diagnostics, of course, which is the main focus in these videos. So the ability to restrict access to functions and, and data to um, limit the ECUs that can kind of be, be touched by a diagnostic tester and also to restrict the use cases. And with this, uh, with this is all delivered to us with a new UDS service, a new unified diagnostics services service. And this is 29HEX, published in 14.229 part one in uh, 2020, split into two main parts, one part covering authentication with PKI certificate exchange, the focus of this series of videos, which makes use of asymmetric cryptography, and then authentication with challenge and response, either asymmetric or symmetric. So asymmetric cryptography is what is supported with Autozar from 4.4.0. Um, the other two here are really outside of scope of Autozar. If you want to do these, it's a custom implementation. It's not impossible, but it's custom. It's not standardized. So you need to understand what you're going to do and specify it so it can be done. Um, we've been focusing on this one because this is what's possible in Autozar. And I showed you with an Autozar based ECU running in a virtual environment, what we can do here. So we were able to compare security access where we have a, a level, um, relatively simple cryptography and the concept of only having critical services protected with simple security access. And yeah, there's this point that we only have one security access state machine independent of connection within Autozar with um, the older security access service. With the new authentication service, we saw how we can have authorization via a role. Now, a role can give a, a set of functionality available to us via a public key infrastructure certificate. And also, we saw how really a lot of stuff that we'd normally expect to maybe be able to do is, is protected. Even read data by identifier is protected potentially when we deploy authentication. We have cryptographic authentication with certificates and also only, uh, rather than having only having one um, security state machine for the whole ECU, regardless of number of connections, with Autosar, we can have an authentication state machine for each individual physical layer connection. So this is much more robust. We looked at in my first video, how the authentication process works between a tester and an ECU. We talked about the chain of trust and how different certificates are, are, are used to build up that chain of trust and how we uh, use public key cryptography to verify certificates that are transferred from a tester to an ECU or potentially vice versa. We then, in the second video, saw how we can connect a vector tool 
via the security manager to a security source transparently from the perspective of the user. So once a security source has been loaded into the security manager within the vector tool, I just had to say, use that source. I didn't need to know anything about the details of it, what it does um, in the background, whether it connects to a server or a, a cloud connection or gets a certificate from a local certificate store. I need to know none of those details as a user. So I'm completely abstracted from all the security considerations there. And this means that really the OEM is able to specify many different implementations. It can be unidirectional, it can be bidirectional, it can involve a backend. We can have elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman um, encryption. You can have a number of certificates being required. So we talked about a single certificate in the example, but perhaps actually there's a number of certificates might be needed to authenticate. And from our side, we're able to provide um, via the security manager the ability to work with lots of different uh, security sources. So we can provide some of them uh, as part of a, an OEM package, but also OEMs are able to provide their own that match to the security manager. There's very easy configuration then from the perspective of a user, just a case of clicking a button to import, file is imported, and then that profile is available for any vector tool user on that PC. So we get this kind of view where we saw the UDS service 29 authentication. We could see the provider and other details. So we have different versions. We can see different versions within Indigo. I showed you how we can set then which profile we want to work with and how to set a role that we want to provide to that profile to, to kick off the authentication. So this is just done in the, the normal manage networks and ECU window. And because we may not have authentication in every ECU, we're able to select the ECUs that we want to apply authentication to. And then obviously we may have different authentication measures needed on different ECUs, so we then have a, are able to have a very fine-grained approach to the ECU that for every ECU that supports or requires authentication. What we then saw is really that's all we need to do. As soon as we connect Indigo, that whole handshaking process, tester to ECU, is done automatically. So in Indigo immediately requests what authentication is, is supported in the positive response, which is, is hidden over here. We get the um, APCE um, information. So Indigo immediately then sent the security certificate data over. The ECU in the positive response sends a challenge. Indigo then sends back a response to that challenge, which is the signature generated with its private key for the certificate. The ECU on the other side is able to verify that signature using the public key from the certificate. So this is um, normal um, modulo based um, security, public key cryptography, loads of videos on this on the internet if you want to know more about it. Um, very similar to how TLS works as well in the bi-directional case, which is also possible. This is a unidirectional case. Um, but yeah, it's, it's automatic. So from the perspective of the user, there's nothing to do. Other things we saw, well, it's possible to write scripts, which are able to be run in vector tools, such as Indigo in Canoe and in Ca um, Canape. And th these can also do authentication. Additionally, and I didn't show this in the, in the demo video, but it's additionally possible within the ECU control window to also access the security manager to authenticate to the level which is set in the, in, um, or with the security source, which is set for that particular ECU. So that's the, our final video. Um, it just to show you a little bit more on the capabilities that are there in vector source. Obviously there's lots more that we can do. So we look forward to hearing from you uh, and being able to speak about your requirements for security and diagnostics in the future. Thank you.